Hello everyone. Here we are starting with a new tutorial on digital system design using BSD. Now in this case we are going to discuss about how to design digital systems. Then we'll discuss about VHDL, which is basically language, its elements, then how to write a code using or using VHDL in Xilinx or in Model Sim. Then we'll discuss about how to design combinational circuits as well as sequential circuit. So let us start with the first term that is what do we mean by system. Sure, we can see a simple schematic of system which consists of a set of input terms, output and behavior. As you know, the simplest definition of system is uh, anything that accepts the input and produces output term is called as a system. In this case, we will define it broadly. It is a set of related component that works as a whole to achieve the goal. These terms are we can put it as a system. Now what it does, it basically consists of three terms, input, behavior and output. The behavior translates the input as an output. So as far as systems are considered, the two important parameters are input, behavior followed by we can put it as output. Let's discuss about classification of systems. Now broadly we are having two types of systems. One is analog system and one is digital system. Let us define analog system. A system having continuous values with respect to time are known as analog systems. Or we can say a system whose input and outputs are analogous in nature, they are treated as analog system. Suppose amplifier is there, attenuator is there, rectifier is there. These all terms we can call it as analog system. We have second classification as digital systems. The definition is a system having finite number of discrete values. Sure, the values are discrete in nature. That means they are not defined at every instant of time. Yes, provided that they are quantized in amplitude. That means on x-axis the parameters are same only. We are having two finite number of discrete values, either 0 or 1. So such kind of systems are known as digital system. Now there are certain advantages of using digital system over analog. Let us see them one by one. First, ease of representation. As far as digital systems are there, it is quite easy to represent them because of two levels, either 0 or 1. But in case of analog, we have different values ranging from say minus to plus infinity. So it becomes ease of representation. Second, it is quite easy to design and fabricate. As far as digital systems are there, once you model the circuit or once you model that particular uh, system, we can replicate it on a larger scale and that is why it is quite easy to design and fabricate third low cost now this is an important parameter as most almost all the systems which are digital in nature first we'll uh, write their code we'll see the correctness and then it is implemented or it is being mapped that means even if there is a problem in the system we can go for the algorithm we can check the error and we can correct it that is why it becomes easy and uh, to identify the errors that is why we can call it as a low cost also fourth it has a high noisiability as it has only two levels either zero or one therefore it can resist a high noise in terms of uh, signals are considered maybe digital signals the next one is the accuracy of dig digital system is poor now why the accuracy is more because the output is again in a form of zero or one so it is quite easy to predict and it is quite approachable also whereas in case of analog system as we can have different values uh, ranging from 0 0 0.1 and so on that is why when we are measuring it on cro it may be difficult or the accuracy can be altered whereas digital system it the accuracy is more next response time is less next we have the systems are more simple the most important parameter as these systems are algorithmic in nature similarly we have only two levels again it comes with the values as 0 1 even if you go for uh, combinational circuits where we are having even parities or odd parity generator circuit and checker circuit where the systems or signals are encrypted and decrypted and that is why they are going to be more secure lastly 
it is it can be easily controllable by computer as the finite number of values in a digital system can be represented by a vector with only two levels. Now we can have a sequence of 0 1 0 1 0 1 we can read it for n number of bits but it can be easily controllable by a computer system. So based on this we can say that it is quite advantageous to deal with a digital system over analog system. Let us come across how can you design a digital system. Let us take one example of uh, say half adder. If I want to design a half adder we have to first predict the input terms, we have to check the behavior of system and then only we can write a logical expression. So whenever we are dealing with designing of any system, we should follow a mapping technology. Let's suppose this one. The very first step starts with identifying the requirements. What are the input terms? What is going to be the operation? Once it is finalized, we will go for design specification. In which way? you can represent the input terms. That means whether they are a single bit or a combination of 0, 1, 0, 1. Once the design specifications are over, we'll go for a design formulation. Like in case of half adder, if you assume it carefully, uh, initially we'll write the truth table. In truth table, we can have inputs as well as output. Based on that, second step, we go for expressions. Suppose half adder is there, we will have an expression sum as less than or equals to a x or b so we have formulated the design then we have to enter the design so while entering the design we need a tool in case of hardware descriptive language we can have a tool called as xilinx or it can be model sim <coughs> so in case of xilinx or model sim or any other tool is there we have to enter the specification so that will be our fourth step that is called as design entry once the design entry is completed, we will go for checking the correctness of the code. That means once we have written all the code, we will check it. That is nothing but simulation. Once the simulation is over, we will go for logic synthesis where we will check the result. If the result is uh, as expected, we will go for mapping in on a hardware circuitry. So in this way, we can perform a design flow for a digital system. If it is the we'll move on to the important task that is called as VHD. Now, as far as digital systems are there, we can design them using VHDL or Verilog. Here we'll concentrate on VHDL. What actually VHDL? It is an acronym that stands for very high scale integrated circuit hardware descriptive language. That means this is a language that is used to describe the structural and behavior of a digital system high scale because it can have uh, n number of kits so as far as uh, integrated circuits are there it was started with small scale integrated devices then medium scale integrated devices large scale then it comes with very large scale so in order to design this we we'll use this language now why we use VHDL that's the big question so in early days when we want to design a system the sketches were handwritten and as the complexity of the circuitry was goes on increasing it becomes uh, improper to design the entire terms on a single sheet because of a n number of kits and to reduce this complexity the term that is called as hardware descriptive language has been arrived and from there the birth of VSDL has been taken place what it does Basically, this language is used to describe the behavior and the structural of a digital system. That means it is used to define the functionality of the system as well as the interconnection of all the components. So this language deals only with two levels, a behavioral level as well as a structural level. It can be used to describe and simulate many digital systems. As far as digital systems are there, we have two sets. One is a combinational circuit, one is a sequential circuit. And in order to design all these systems, we can use VHDL. So this is about the basic concepts of VHDL. Also, uh, there are three levels at which we can define the entire combinational and sequential circuit. The first is behavioral. At this level, we'll define functionality of the system. Let's suppose I'm taking an example of half adder again. So when when the when the combinational circuit half adder comes into mind automatically we will fetch its function that it can have two inputs and it will give two outputs that means it is used to add only two inputs 
corresponding results will be sum and cap. Once the behavioral level is over, we'll go for a data flow where we'll represent the actual flow of data through logical equation. Just like when I define a truth table, I will go for the second step as expression where we can have two expression. One is for sum and one is for carry. So these equations are implemented at data flow level. Now it comes with the third step as logic diagram. So that logic diagram includes interconnection of components with input term. That level is called as structural. So as far as any combinational or sequential circuit is there, we have to deal with behavioral level, data flow as well as structure. So this is about the basics or why to use for VHDL.